We have previously looked at the process of linearizing a nonlinear state variable model, but we have not yet looked at an example. In this video, we work through a simple linearization example. The general linearization case that we discussed in a previous video is shown here on the left. Let's do a quick recap. This is the nonlinear state equation, and this is the nonlinear output equation. For this module, we only look at linearization at an equilibrium point, which is defined as the states x0 and input u0, for which there is no change in state. The deviation from the equilibrium point can be approximated by this linear state variable model. The state matrices are called Jacobians, and their definitions are shown over here. The example system we look at today is a second-order nonlinear system with states x1 and x2, input u and output y. The dynamics of the system is described by these two differential equations, and the output is related to the states by this equation. The problem we want to solve is to linearize this system at the equilibrium corresponding to the input equal to 1. At this point, I suggest you pause the video and try to solve this problem before looking at the solution. Let's now look at the solution. The first step is to write the nonlinear model in the same format as the general nonlinear state variable model. From the differential equations, we can easily write down that the derivative of the state vector is given by this vector of nonlinear functions in terms of the states and the input. The first function is function f1, and the second function is function f2. From the output equation, we identify the function g as shown over here. The next step is to calculate the equilibrium. An equilibrium is defined as a combination of states and input. However, we are only given the input at the equilibrium, so we have to calculate the states at the equilibrium. To do this, we call the states at the equilibrium A and B. We then use the definition of the equilibrium and combine that with our nonlinear state equation to solve for A and B, which gives us the state vector at the equilibrium as minus 1 and minus 1. The last step is to calculate the Jacobians and evaluate them at the equilibrium. For this matrix, we have to solve this Jacobian and then evaluate it at the equilibrium. For the top row of the Jacobian, we have to calculate the derivative of the function f1 with respect to the states x1 and x2. We therefore look up our function f1 and calculate the derivative of this function with respect to x1 and x2, which gives us the top row as shown over here. Similarly, the bottom row of the Jacobian is the derivative of function f2 with respect to the states, which results in this line. We now evaluate this matrix at the equilibrium states of x equal to minus 1 and minus 1, which results in this constant matrix. For this Jacobian, which is rewritten over here, we have to calculate the derivative of function f1 and f2 with respect to the input u, which results in this column vector. After evaluating it at the equilibrium, we get this constant column vector. For this Jacobian, which is rewritten over here, we have to calculate the derivative of function g with respect to the states x1 and x2, which results in this row vector. After evaluating it at the equilibrium, we get this constant row vector. For the last Jacobian, we have to calculate the derivative of function g with respect to the input u, which is equal to 0. We can now approximate the dynamics of the deviation from the system from the equilibrium point as this state equation and this output equation. 